You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video. And by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, welcome back to our continuing coverage of CES 2015. I'm John P. And I am Derek Kessler. Welcome, Derek. I'm glad to be here. And welcome to me, too, because you and I haven't been working all day. That's the way to do it. Uh, but we are working now, and we have wonderful guests lined up for you guys today, not the least of which we're going to start off with our friends from BMW. We've got Klaus here. How are you, sir? Pretty good. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Fantastic. And I love your name, Klaus Classing. That's right. That is, yes. a, that is that a, is that is unique a even in the land name. of BMWs, right? <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. So we're so excited. This is actually the first time that we've had uh, anyone from BMW on the show. Oh wow! I know that's totally unfair of us. I don't know why we've covered BMW, but oh, yeah. we've never Absolutely. had you on the live show. You should go so over to the silver lot because that's where we have a huge tent. I was gonna say, you know, <laughs> the other day when we were unloading and getting set up and stuff, we were we were coming. We were like, we drove our little trailer in and stuff, and I looked up and I was like, oh my god. Look at all the BMWs over there. It is pretty big, yeah. What were you doing with all those BMWs? I mean, you get like a ton, of, like a lot full of cars. Um, so you can actually test drive uh, some of them. You get to test drive the i3, which is the all electric one. Yeah. Which is a lot of fun, especially at the traffic light. You're next to that performance car and you're just taking off. Yeah, I, uh -huh. I got to drive that one last year at CES. Oh, okay. so it was a whole hell of a lot. It's so all torque, right? Yeah. I mean, oh, it's, it's like electric. It's all torque. And the cool thing this year is if you sign up for a test drive, you get to drive it. But when it's your turn to pick the car up, it'll actually come by itself without. No, it does it. not. It no, does. it does not. It autonomously pulls up to the curb, and then you can get in. And you actually call it from your smartwatch. You can say, "BMW, pick me up," and it'll drive up. That's insane. So that's what we're showing at the Silver Lot. Now, among wait. Among wow. other things. Okay, wait a minute. Now, you're you're showing that at the Silver Lot, but it's in an area that's been like somehow programmed for that or something like. You can't buy one of those cars and do that. Like you can't go to the mall and your car pick you up at the mall. So that's not a product yet. It's a showcase. But okay. Actually, we've taken care that we're doing this with Series i3, where we've just modified a bit of the software. We haven't put any additional sensors on top, and that's why we let you test drive it afterwards because the car actually does that with what it has on board in terms of sensors today. Wow. So you're saying in theory, any of any of the cars on the road could be slightly tweaked out, and they could basically do that in the right like you can you can in the actually, right environment. Yeah, you can do actually a lot of optimization on the software side, and then depending on what kind of functions you want to show, obviously there'll be more sensors on the cars. So we actually did something really cool at the beginning of CES, um, at the top parking lot on the, in the SLS hotel. We actually invited people to drive a BMW, and we told them crash it. Try and crash it. And it wouldn't crash? And we had something that we call 360 degree collision avoidance, which is called active assist. And so they were trying to slam on the gas pedal or hit it into a wall, and the car will always safely stop right before the wall. That's impressive. So Could you do that? You uh, said it was on the top of the, the, on top? the top of the parking garage? Yeah, yeah. So like, like full tilt towards the wall, which if you went through that oh wall, yeah, yeah, you're dead. Absolutely. Would you do were, that? If I was on camera, yes, I would. Because <laughs> that's like a million so people views were, on yes. YouTube. Yeah. People were careful at first, and we told them to be more aggressive, and there was no way you could get that car to crash. So, The first that's time, the, 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 the only experience I've had with a, quote, self kind of anything car, self-driving car, whatever, it was at IFA, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in a Ford, uh, like a Ford like Focus or something, okay? And the, it was demonstrating the self-parking. You know how these cars yeah, can right. self parallel park now and so I was I don't know why because we were going like one mile an hour but you know I was so <laughs> nervous it is it's hard to break the habit yeah. right I'm I mean I've been driving for decades and to think you should never let it go of a steering wheel an absolutely eerie experience right you're but sitting on the passenger seat for example now you talked about self-parking something that we actually demoed also at the parking structure at the SLS was complete autonomous valet parking so you tell the car, you, you drop it off at the drop-off zone, and you tell it to go park itself. So what it does, and we showed this, um, it sort of autonomously finds its way in a multi-story parking structure, parks itself. When you want to have it later on, you call, you call you on your smartwatch, pick me up, and it'll find its way back and pick you up. And we actually had people sitting on the passenger seat while we did that demo. Oh. So they were in the car, they're and like the car is going out, through right? the parking lot. 
and it does everything by itself, right? Would so that make you nervous? There, there's part of me that doesn't want to give up that control, but there's also part of me that'd be like, you know what? I'm okay with not the, having the stress of finding a parking spot. Yeah. I will tell you that I want that. I don't, I, and I'm a driver, by the way. Yeah. I'm, I'm an enthusiast. Like, I, I own exotic cars and I track, you know, race and motorcycles, mm -hmm. the whole nine right. yards. Right. And despite all of that, to be honest, I would like to leave the driving to a computer. I, I the computer is like, a better driver than any of us could ever be. And and also, you know, like when I want to go have fun with a car, I want to drive it like a maniac. But I can't do that on the street anyway. No. So you, that's not fun. So no. why not let the cars drive you and park you and stuff like that? Right. So actually our take on, on um, a lot of people call it autonomous driving. We actually call it highly automated driving is that when you want to have fun, I mean, BMW is all about sheer driving pleasure, right? right. Yep. So when you want to have fun, go ahead, slam that gas pedal down, you know, have your fun. Yep. But there's a lot of times when driving is actually really tedious, mm -hmm. yes. you know, long drive on the highway and things, and this is where the car um, should be able, you know, to take over some of that work and actually have you be able to relax, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. You know, on the way here, it's, uh, we, dro we, we drive from Dallas to Las Vegas, which is basically- Nothing. You know, it's there's a thousand nothing. miles of, of of straight highway, boring, boring <laughs> straight highway. It would be awesome if the car could just do that for us. You Absolutely. Know? Yep. Uh, so you guys. Oh yeah, yeah. On the way here, we had icy, crappy conditions. It was so stressful for a human. A computer wouldn't care. A computer would have no emotion. Right. And yeah. uh, and a computer could see further than me in the dark, and it could anticipate things. Uh, exactly. So yeah, you guys. Are, are demoing some of those really super advanced features. Um, and you talked about your smartwatch and like, you know, just calling up the phone. But you've got all kinds of other smart types of, of, of connectivity with the vehicles yep. now, right? Tell us about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So actually this year we're showcasing a couple of really cool things. Um, sort of, you know, going actually beyond the car. So we're saying mobility actually doesn't start when you're in the car because you've already decided you want to take the car then. Right. But it starts on your couch, right? You're at home. You're planning your day. You're thinking, oh, where do I have to be tomorrow? How do I get there? Mm -hmm. And so we've actually uh, sh uh, made a showcase that um, brings some of that functionality on your smart TV. So that's something we're showing at our booth um, where you would have two dashboards. One is uh, the vehicle dashboard. So that's the same functionality that we have in an app today in a smartphone app that's called BMW iRemote. It lets you see um, the charging status of your i3, for example. We nicely visualize the range, so where exactly would it get you to on a map, which is really handy on the big screen like yeah. the smart TV. Yeah. You could also control the functions that you can control in the remote app, like um, you know, open the doors, um, actually lock Start the doors, the car, pre you know, climatize the car, and bring up the air conditioning, and so on. So you can do all that on a TV set. So we think that's very nice because it's in your living room, right? Sort of a very natural context. The second thing we're showing is what we call the mobility dashboard, and actually that goes a lot further. So if you live in a big metropolitan area, chances are you know we all love driving the BMW, but if you're stuck in traffic and you have to look for parking, chances are you might want to consider using also other modes of transport, right? So we're actually, we've built a system that will consider all mobility options available to you in a big metropolis. And so we'll consider the car with traffic conditions. We'll consider public transport. So I'm sure a lot of you guys came with a monorail, for example, yep, yep. Yep. to the convention center. Yep. So we would consider that bike route, bike. so that really depends on where you are, you know, in the US, for example, whether yeah. you'd like to use the bike. But or it's for often us, we've been using the Eco, I don't know if you see our scooters, we've got Eco Rico scooters. Oh, great. Uh, they go like 20 <laughs> miles an hour, and they have 20 miles of range, and I was trying to figure out, like, what's the best way from here to the hotel, and oh, I found with that, you choose the bike route. Like, normally we walk, yeah. or we do car, or public transport, yeah. but right. you could choose the bike route, so if you had a scooter or a bike, that was efficient. So you're saying you would... We would Tell consider me, that. Don't absolutely. drive my car. Yeah. Take we, a different route. We, we could do that, and we would consider all the routes. And in many cases, on a bike, you can beat traffic, actually. Yes. Oh, yeah. A lot. Right? Yeah. So like around here on those scooters, the fastest oh, yeah. way anywhere because <laughs> right. the gridlock, the lines for the monorail, etc. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So we consider all these options, and then we do something which is actually really cool. We take uh, your personal calendar. We say, well, tell us where and when you need to be at certain places. So uh, in our showcase, we're showing a guy who's going to CES. So he's going to a couple of talks in the morning, he has a lunch appointment, and in each of these appointments in his calendar, you actually have um, locations, and we resolve those two points on the map, and we figure out what does he need to do to get from A to B. And then we actually recommend and say, okay, for this, you have three options. You can take the car, probably have to look for parking after that, or you take a cab, 
uh, you can take the bike, right? Or you could, um, for example, there's a bus running, right? Or the monorail, and we show how long each of these options take. That's so awesome. that starts on the smart TV at home, and then when you're on the go, we actually have the same thing on a smartphone and a smart watch. And I can actually show Demo, you some of that. Yeah, show want. us. And, and by the way, you know, I, I don't know, Derek, if, if that made you think of any weird questions, but I started thinking about like, uh, when you say you'll interface with my calendar and, and, and you'll help map out routes and things, what if I use, for example, like Google? Google Calendar is oh, my no calendar. Oh, yeah. No worries, absolutely. So we were able to work with any calendar that's sort of in the cloud, right? So okay. it could be an Outlook, Google, iCal, whatever. Yeah. And you can even manage it from a different application, right? Oh, you okay. might, you know, if you're at work, you might do that in the browser, you might do that on the smartphone. And we actually listen to events on that calendar, so if anything changes, we will automatically plan your mobility, that's right? Sweet. Excellent. So what you're seeing here in the smartphone app is actually um, uh, the iRemote app from BMW, so this keeps you connected to your vehicle, you can see the state of charge, this is connected to real i3 that's out in the silver lot right now, so it's 60% charged, you know. Which so is about 50 miles. Exactly, yeah. and that actually also depends on the previous driving behavior. And oh yeah, I was going to ask, all kinds you, of you learn that I drive like a maniac and my wife drives real conservatively For or example, vice versa? So she, get, she will get more range. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we consider conditions like traffic, slopes, curvature, and so on. So down here you have the usual functions like climatize the car and so on. And for uh, CES we've actually uh, pimped this app. We've added oh, one yeah. extra button, right? Ooh. Which is this one. And this takes you to what we call the mobility agenda. Now this is what I just talked about, taken from a personal calendar. So this guy has you know, a breakfast appointment, then he goes to some technical meeting, then he's at lunch. I think he's mostly eating actually. Yeah, there's a lot <laughs> of eating involved <laughs> yeah. at CES. Uh, this is where he's having coffee, right? And so for each of these now, I can look, I see I have three of three mobility options, for example, to get from this meeting to lunch. And I can look at these options um, on a map actually, right? So I would see, okay, this is how I can get there, but there are more options, right? I could take the bike, maybe not to come in Las Vegas. Uh, I don't know if this would be dangerous. Or the scooter. <laughs> or the scooter, right? I could take the bus, or in this case, the car route is selected, right? And um, so you can zoom in, you can see more detail. Uh, we actually also have um, included indoor maps, and we're partnering with here, formerly Navtech, right? uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nokia here, uh, to do a bunch of this stuff. So you can see indoor maps here in the casinos. So we're really trying to get you from where you are at right now, first mile to that last mile, uh, to your very destination. Are, are you running that, are we looking at that live? That's not some pre-recorded thing, right? No, That's this is actually tied into um, What network carrier are you using just at the moment, out of uh, curiosity? So currently I have Wi-Fi connectivity at oh, the booth. Okay, cool, right? okay. So, and actually, the, this is coupled with my smartwatch, so on the watch face, um, I'm actually also connected to the car, right? So maybe to mention that the connection to the car is through the BMW backend, right? Right. So the car is, has connectivity always. All the BMWs have connectivity actually. And so this is able then to connect and say, oh, same thing, right? 60% charge, that's my range, right? The reason I asked is because uh, this, is, this has nothing to do with the functionality of that app, but that is moving really fast. Yeah. Now, I own a Ford plug-in hybrid that has an app that you can connect to, and, and I love you, Ford, <laughs> but when I pull up my app, I wait okay. a long time for it to interface with their stuff, so okay. I'm surprised by how fast how fast and fluid you're getting that information. I've never right. seen a car connection that fast. Oh, okay. No, so all of our Through cars have um, at least GSM connectivity to uh -huh. talk to the back end. I mean, to be fair, it really depends on the condition that you're under, right? So if you have a slow cell phone connection, yeah, and you're sure, sending but I mean, remote functions to the car, but we're talking, you know, at most, I mean, t some 10, 20 seconds until something would happen on the car. Yeah, okay. And usually it's much faster than that, right? Okay. So now the cool thing and is... And that's a good looking interface too. I like yeah. the interface Thank for you. that stuff. Yeah. Thank you. So this is a basically an ex extension of the app that exists today uh, on the market, which is the iRemote app, right? Uh, so it has the cool BMW UI sort of look and feel. And now when I actually um, take one of these appointments, let's say this one, and I say, um, well, start guidance, right? Navigate me. So what that'll do is it'll actually start the guidance on the phone as well. So you can see I have guiding instructions here, and they come up on my phone, which in this case is a Moto 360, right? And I actually get turn by turn on the phone, right? So this oh, will actually be sweet. all the way to my final nice. destination, right? Get in and car. When I cancel that here, it'll actually get canceled on the phone. Oh, so that's they're super paired. sweet. And one thing we actually also took care to do is um, to uh, work with alerts. 
So when something happens on your route, you'll be alerted on all your devices, including the smart TV, phone, and the watch. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say. That is you guys super are sweet. blown away. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that's, that's yeah. really nice. When is this going to be available in a production um, vehicle? So for the purpose of CES, we've prepared it as a showcase that talks to actually a live backend that we've built that pulls in all these services. Okay. And so what usually happens is that after shows like CES, when people get all excited about it, then at some point we, we make a product decision. And so there's no announced timeline for this. Gotcha. To give you an example, uh, last year we actually showed off um, part of this remote functionality on the Galaxy Gear, and that actually won the CES Innovation Award last mm -hmm. year uh, in apps and mobile. Yep. And that became a product last year in September. So that's available on Android Wear now and on Tizen. So we can be really quick. I mean, we're the engineers. We get yeah. to build the cool yeah. stuff. But then there's all, obviously all kinds of considerations, like you know the actual form and shape in which we launch it, yeah, the markets, right. and so on. Well, I think it's awesome looking, Derek. It's incredible. All right. Thank you so much for coming and sharing all the cool BMW stuff with us. Thanks you guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more coverage coming out of CES 2015. I'm John. I'm Derek. Be right back.